the Wright Brothers' historic first flight in 1903 opened a new era of aviation. It was an era in which African-American aviators soon achieved many significant firsts of their own. But to do so, they often had to overcome considerable barriers. One pioneer, Janet Harmon Bragg, recalled, There were so many things they said women couldn't do and blacks couldn't do. Every defeat to me was a challenge. Emory Conrad Malik's story was hidden for more than 90 years, but we know that he was the first African-American to earn a pilot's license. Malik worked as an aerial photographer and operated an air transportation service in Pennsylvania. Eugene Jacques Ballard, the son of a former slave, was barred from joining his own country's Air Force. Nonetheless, Ballard became the first African-American fighter pilot when he flew combat missions for the French Air Service during World War I. Bessie Coleman could not find an American flight school willing to accept an African-American woman, so she went to France to learn to fly. Coleman, who had grown up picking cotton in Texas, was the first African-American woman to earn a pilot's license. Engineer William J. Powell was dedicated to involving young African-Americans in aviation, which he predicted would become a powerful industry. In Los Angeles, Powell founded the first African-American flying club and the first African-American-owned airplane building company. He named both organizations after Bessie Coleman. Members of the Bessie Coleman Aero Club, James Herman Banning and Thomas C. Allen were the first African-American aviators to complete a transcontinental flight. Despite having to stop to repair their old plane and raise money for fuel, Banning and Allen successfully flew from Los Angeles, California to Long Island, New York. Janet Harmon Bragg used her nursing salary to buy a small airplane so that she and other African-Americans in Chicago could learn to fly. Bragg joined with these students and their flight instructors, John C. Robinson and Cornelius Coffey, to found the Challenger Aero Club, which built the first African-American-owned airport. As a commander of the Imperial Ethiopian Air Force in the Italo-Ethiopian War, John C. Robinson was the first African-American to lead a nation's Air Force. Robinson is often called the father of the Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen included the first African-American pilots, navigators, bombardiers, and ground crew allowed to serve in the U.S. Army Air Corps. The Tuskegee Airmen fought for their country with skill and courage in World War II and paved the way for desegregation of the U.S. Armed Forces. Challenger Aero Club member Willa Brown was at the forefront of the movement to desegregate the U.S. Army Air Corps. Brown recruited and trained pilots who would serve as Tuskegee Airmen. In 1942, she became the first African-American woman commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Civil Air Patrol. The African-American pioneers of aviation achieved much in the first half of the 20th century, but there were even more firsts in flight ahead. In the 21st century, new chapters are being added to this history of perseverance and accomplishment as African Americans provide their knowledge, ability, and leadership to the aerospace industry, national defense, and scientific exploration of the skies near our planet and the vastness of space. <laughs>